So I've been wanting to tell this part of the Seinfeld story for quite some time, and here to help me from behind the camera, heckling me, is my younger daughter. We've been watching YouTube videos, looking for tips and tricks on how to make my channel just a little bit better. Her favorite channel is Mary Catherine. Mariah Elizabeth. Mariah Carey. Mariah Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. You know the YouTube channel that's so much better than yours? Oh yes, Mariah Elizabeth. Anyway, based off of the analytics from the first 12 videos in this series, I think it's safe to say that tens of millions of you out there Tens of millions of you out there are just dying to know how I built this sign. Really? Okay, tens of thousands of you. Tens of thousands of you. No, uh, no, no. Okay, tens of you might have a mild amount of interest enough to watch a few minutes before clicking off to the next Mr. Beast spectacle. Like two people. T two people? You're giving me two people? Two people? Yeah, two people. And if you're one of those two people, congratulations for making it this far. Epic burn. Anyway, this is a video about design, engineering, and woodworking. And procrastination. And a good amount of procrastination. Like four years worth. Yeah, that's fair. Anyway, when we joined our local small Episcopal congregation, it didn't take long for me to be outed as a woodworker. Welcome to our congregation. I like woodworking. Okay. As luck would have it, the exterior sign for the church was in need of replacement, and I was the obvious choice for the job, but it did take a little bit of persuading. Can you build us a new sign? I shall overbuild it. I wanted to make a sign that would last for generations, and I really wanted to make it out of hardwood. Isn't all wood hard? If you know nothing else about woodworking, you should know that wood is not a static medium. With changes in heat and moisture, it will twist, cup, and generally misbehave. How can something that's not alive misbehave? This board was flat when I initially milled it out of a log. Over time, it's developed quite a twist and a cup and is no longer flat. Unless I cut this into smaller pieces, it's generally not particularly useful. Unless... Oh, damn, bro. These are totally If I were to design a sign without wood movement in mind, it would likely potato chip, blow itself apart, or both. I want a potato chip! One solution would be to use plywood, which is manufactured by gluing thin layers of wood together. Each layer alternates grain, which stabilizes the structure and minimizes movement. But plywood would not have achieved the look I was going for. In the end, I came up with a solution that combined the best of plywood and hardwood. The core of the sign is made of marine grade plywood, which should keep things nice and flat. The front and back skins are glued up panels of white oak. The trick is going to be, how do I attach the skins to the plywood in a stable and flexible way. Assembling the front and back panels was one of my early tasks. While the individual boards were milled flat, I had to pay close attention to make sure the whole glue up remained flat. So I was a little worried as to the flatness of this once I got it glued up. It's pretty darn good. Not a whole lot to take off, thank goodness. Jeff and I did the CNC work right on the eve of the COVID lockdown. I had a pretty good idea how I was going to make it work, but the pandemic, a house move, and life in general delayed things. But come the summer of 2022, it was time to enact my plan. As you do, I brought the sign with me on vacation for a little R and R and R. Rest, relaxation, and over-engineering. I commandeered half of my in-law's garage, set up a rickety workbench, and got to work. I started with sanding in order to remove milling marks, glue squeeze out, and some water stains from storage. Fortunately, all these imperfections sanded away nicely. The challenge was to affix these somewhat volatile solid wood skins to the plywood core, securely enough to hold the skins flat, but not constrain them so much as to lead to cracking. After two years in varying environments, the plywood core remained flat, 
while the white oak skin had warped significantly. For the front skin, I started with routing an elongated hole in the plywood core. Through this slot, a stainless steel bolt could be secured into a threaded insert installed in the front skin. This configuration meets the requirement of holding the panel flat while still allowing for some movement. I couldn't repeat the same process for the back skin as I now lacked access to the front of the plywood core. Instead, I chose a cladding mechanism whereby bolts installed into threaded inserts on the back of the plywood core would fit into keyholes on the back skin. With these two techniques, I'm reasonably hopeful that the sign will hold up to whatever Mother Nature might throw at it. The individual boards making up the front skin were random widths, so I marked them on the plywood core and then extended the lines out. The actual number of attachment points was largely determined by the expense of the hardware. At nearly $3 a pop, these things were not cheap. In the end, I made about four attachment points per board. Take note of how wobbly my workbench is. This will come into play a little bit later. The actual layout of the slots on the plywood core was somewhat arbitrary, but it was critical that I transfer these marks accurately onto the front skin. To accomplish this, I initially tried to lay it out on the floor, and Cooper was trying to help, but lacking opposable thumbs, he was less than a capable assistant. I moved the operation to my workbench and temporarily attached the sign to the core. I then carefully transferred the marks by lightly drilling in the center of the slots. I removed the core and got to work drilling the holes for the threaded inserts. It was critical here that I not drill too deep, otherwise I would blow right through the front of the sign. This would have been quite the party foul and not something I wanted to deal with. Fortunately, this drill guide saved me from such an ignominious fate. The threaded inserts are stainless steel to avoid corrosion. I installed them using a specialized bit, followed by an impact driver. And a little final tweak with a hand screwdriver. Then, like much of this phase of the project, it was rinse and repeat. Then came the tedious job of installing all the hardware for a test fit. Fortunately, everything seemed to work out quite well. Next, it was time to turn my attention to attaching the back skin. I started by drilling through holes through the plywood core. And then installing the threaded inserts. Similar to the front part of the sign, I then had to transfer these hole locations onto the back skin. It was at this point that my rickety workbench came to bite me in the butt. But ultimately, the show had to go on. I transferred the marks using an awl, highlighted them with a pencil, and then lightly drilled.
My initial plan was to inlay these pieces of metal hardware, but I ultimately decided that would be too complicated. I chose this keyhole bit instead. Using this shop made jig for consistency, I routed all the keyholes. Note the battle injury on my right leg. I used fewer attachment points on the back skin, largely because I was running out of the threaded inserts and didn't have time to order more. I tested out the appropriate height of the attachment screws using a scrap piece. and then set all the screws at that height, locking them in place with a little bit of thread lock. And now came the moment of truth. I got a very satisfying clunk here, then pulled down on the skin to engage the keyholes. And with my apparent success, blasphemed just a little bit. Chef sign. It works. This doesn't look like much, but this is a huge Chef signing. victory. The sign fit on the keyholes perfectly, slid down, holding it on. There's a little cup there, but the frame will hold that in place. This is really good worked really well. Thank God. A few months later, after applying finish and doing the final assembly, the sign was really coming together. I'll cover how I completed the frame and installation in upcoming videos. And to the two of you still watching, congratulations for making it this far. It's so boring even to watch my dad do this.